So I'm going to explain some concepts in making your own perfume and how you would explain that to different age groups. Okay, so first off explaining to preschool and kindergarten, you would want to explain molecules in a way that they would understand. You might not even want to use the word molecule yet. So smell can be explained as an actual substance. Even though you can't see it, it's actually physically there. So you can barely see this mist because this water is in such small little particles. Just imagine that smell is like even smaller than that so you can't see it. So these smells each have their own unique little shape. So these little shapes, they'll waft into your nose and they will have their own little um, special landing pad that matches that shape, a little smell receptor. And these smell receptors will match the molecules and once it lands there, it can send a signal to your brain about what you just smelled. So one way to think of this is maybe a key and you would have a very specific shape in the key that would go into the lock and then once you turn it um, the message will open the gateway to your brain of what you just smelled and you'll comprehend it. Okay, so it's important to know about solvents. So in case you don't know, a solvent is a liquid and this is the main component that you dissolve the other smaller things into. So whether that's the actual particles of plant matter like the flowers here or if it's your essential oils that you're adding, the solvent is the main component whereas the smaller things you're adding are called solute. So that's what a solvent is which is something that maybe a middle schooler or a high schooler beyond that should know about. Okay, so for like dissolves like you can see that this oil here is not mixing with this water because this oil is a lot more nonpolar than this polar water. Generally nonpolar has um, a structure where it's a long carbon chain with hydrogen and polar would be something with maybe a hydroxyl group. So water has, you know, the H2O it has the oxygen. And that gives it a partial negative charge on the oxygen and a partial positive charge on the hydrogen. That's kind of similar to a magnet. If you've ever had magnets that you've played with, um, one end of the magnet will repel the other end. And as you know, um, or maybe you've heard, um, Charges of the same will repel, whereas opposite charges will attract. That's what's going on with magnets where they're repelling and attracting each other. And basically that's how solvents work, is normally you um, will put a nonpolar substance into a nonpolar, or a polar into a polar substance. So maybe an older audience would understand polarity better, and that's something you could go into.